hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Head Kick Audio, episode number 43. I believe that's the number we're on these days. Uh, in that intro, you're hearing, ah, check it out, the boys, Cutthroat Gorgeous. Ah, that's your intro. And then, of course, in your outro, you're going to have the other boys by the gods. And uh, on today's show, we got UFC 248, LFA 83, and Invicta, their Phoenix series. Uh, this is their third installment, which featured Bantamweights. Okay, and then in the main event of that fight, you had uh, a title fight in the Bantamweight division. So this, this card really showcased the Bantamweights, like, pretty well. Pretty well. And then in LFA... Of course, you had the return of the Leech over at the Bomb Factory. This was in Dallas, Texas. Uh, Damon Jackson in the main event there versus uh, Mauro Chalet. I hope I'm saying that right. That'd be like a, a French Brazilian. Uh, I think it's Chalet. Anyway, and then of course, UFC 248. You have uh, Israel Adesanya taking on Yoel Romero for the middleweight title. And then Weili Thang taking on... Former strawweight champion, so Whaley uh, making her first title defense at strawweight here on a 25 win streak or some shit like that. Pretty intense, pretty intense stuff. So that's UFC 248. So we'll get to all of that first. I relive this fight right here. Check it out. This uh, Dennis Bazooka versus Tim Dooling. He posted the video on his uh, Facebook. Um, so go go to his uh, go to his profile, and he posted it there. Watch that fight, man. Watch that fight. That's that's a great fight. Watching it the second time around was uh, I love that fight. Anyway, so go peep that shit right there, and then of course, of course, I'd be silly if I didn't say uh, check out my boys, uh, Cuz Real Gorgeous. We're gonna be playing over at the Edge Bar in Tucson, Arizona, with War of Ages, Convictions, and Dens. So check that shit out. Well, let's go ahead and get started, back to the MMA action here. Uh, Invicta, their Phoenix series, uh, this was the, the Bantamweights, you know, bam, you can see those right there, those are results, what the hell is that? Oh, okay, it's on the camera. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so, this is a very long card. I believe there was only one finish on the entire thing, and it was in one of the, uh, the reserve bouts. Okay, this was, they had a couple reserve bouts in case one of the girls in the main tournament was unable to continue. They have, uh, some reserve fighters that still had to compete in a five round, uh, a five round, a five minute round. But, sh should one of the fighters not been able to make it, one of the, these girls, you know, they'd be able to take, a uh, you know, just step in. So, it, like I said, we'll just run through the results because it's a lot of unanimous and they're only five minute rounds. So, Serena De Jesus, a training partner of uh, Roxanne Modafferi, uh, who is one of my personal favorites. Uh, Serena De Jesus gets it done over Kerry Kennison via unanimous decision. Ten nines across the board. Taylor Juarado defeated Claire uh, Guthrie uh, via unanimous decision. Uh, ten nines across the board. Tanisha Tennant. This chick's bad. Okay, she defeated Brittany Victoria via unanimous decision. Ten nines across the board there as well. And then, uh, let's see, those are your quarterfinals. Oh, Hope Chase defeated uh, Julia Atolino. Uh, Hope Chase was my pick uh, to win this, by the way. Just so we're clear, I know the results. I know the results. My pick was Hope Chase. Her Kane, she's a beast, man. Okay, and then in your reserve bouts, you had Kelly Clayton defeat uh, Florina Moller, Moyer, Mo uh, via rear naked choke, uh, 451, nine seconds left in the fucking fight, and uh, she got it done there. The only finish on the card, by the way. And then uh, Mitzi Mary defeated uh, Morgan Hickam via unanimous decision, 10 nines across the board. Okay, and then you get into the semifinals, right? The semifinals. You had Taylor Guadardo defeating Serena De Jesus via split decision. Okay, and then Tanisha Tennant defeating uh, my girl Hope Chase via unanimous decision. Ten nines across the board there. So Hope gets bounced out of the tournament via decision. But remember, 
five minutes. They got five minutes to do the dang thing, okay? And then you had a, so now that sets up your, your final uh, for this uh, tournament here, Tanisha Tennant versus Taylor Woodard. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm fucking these names up, so just bear with me here. Just as per usual. I should have like a disclaimer. I butcher names. Anyways, um, so, but before you get to the final, you had the girl, uh, Kay Hansen, uh, taking on Liana Perosin. Uh, this was a fucking fantastic fight. 30-27s and a 30-26, okay, for Kay Hansen. She's only 20 years old. This chick is badass. Okay, she's badass. Her takedowns, uh, she stays committed. Uh, she throws up submissions, and she, she's got a tank. Okay, she's got a gas tank. She's very fun. This is not the first time I've seen her fight. I just get really excited uh, whenever she fights because she's so badass. Anyways, she gets it done via unanimous decision. So, uh, implications there uh, for her. And then uh, Tanisha Tennant defeated uh, Taylor Guardardo via 30-27s across the board. Pretty, pretty easy night for Tennant there. She pretty much dominates uh, every single fight she's in and uh, looks pretty fucking fantastic doing it. And uh, so she got a big trophy. This thing looked freaking cool. Something out of like the Pride era. And uh, now implications for her going forward. Well, remember the fight after hers was the Bantamweight title. Okay? She just won the Bantamweight tournament. You know what's going to happen next, right? Well, it seems like what's next for Tennant could be uh, the winner uh, between uh, Julia Storiorenko and Lisa Frisosa. So we'll have to see uh, what uh, Shannon is going to do from there. But uh, in your main event, Julia Storiorenko. I, I thought I, I think I said stole your ankle. It's stole your ankle. Uh, I just call her stole your ankle. Uh, versus Lisa Brazosa in one of the fucking most bloodiest badass uh, fights I've seen in Invicta. These girls, they put on a fucking show. It was fucking awesome. Uh, Julia defeats her via split decision. Um, and this, let me also, shit, I'm going to run out of time here talking about Invicta. <laughs> okay, real quick, they did open scoring on all the non-tournament uh, fights, because, you know, they were only run around. But uh, they did open scoring. It was very fucking cool. Uh, Holloway, Max Holloway, former UFC featherweight champ. Uh, he was actually there because he was, uh, he wanted to see it. You know, he wanted to see it happen. So, anyways, we got to move on, ladies and gentlemen. So let's move on to LFA 83, Bomb Factory, Dallas, Texas. Uh, headlined by Damon uh, Jackson, the leech, returning. Uh, taking on Mauro Chalet. The night was opened by Fernie Garcia defeating uh, Jay Viola via unanimous decision. Decision, sorry. Uh, a couple 3027s and a 30, 6, 3026 across the board. Bam, you seen that here? Okay, Victor Altamarino defeated uh, Chris Ocon via split decision, and there was some uh, controversy there. Okay, not the first fight with controversy either. Okay, Vernon Lewis. God damn. This is a cop, okay, by day, and a fucking professional cage fighter by night, and he does this thing for his, uh, I guess that's like his thing, right? It's fucking weird. But <laughs> anyways, uh, he takes on Austin Lane. Austin, a former uh, professional uh, NFL player, and also remember, he was on Dana White's Contender Series, uh, and he took on that, uh, that Hardy boy, right? That Greg Hardy. Uh, well, he got his shit fucking, <laughs> he was all, oh, where am I in that fight? Uh, well, pretty much, not pretty much the same thing in this fight. Sorry. Let me fucking rewind there. Vernon gets it down uh, on the ground and gets, him, gets it done via ground and pound with some punches there. So let me go ahead and, uh, uh, I've been seeing this beer forever and I'm always like, I want to try it. I'm trying it's not bad, but it's not great. Anyways, uh, so Vernon Lewis, uh, first round TKO victory over Austin Lane. Um, again, with a weird celebration thing. I'm not even entirely sure what that. Maybe he's hungry for more? Huh? Huh? Anyways, uh, he's now on a win streak. I think he's won two straight. 
Haley, uh, all hail Cowan, uh, defeated Brittany Cloudy via split decision. And look, this is a great fight. Okay, this really showed a Cloudy is very, very good despite her now 2-2 two and two record, I believe. Okay, she's very long, very athletic, very strong. I want to see this chick fight again. But look, the judges decided that Cowan got it done by the narrowest of margins here. And she got tested. She got tested. She says, you know, she fell flat. We don't know what's going on. And my armrests, that's what I need. I need something to lean on. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, not the greatest performance from, from Cal, um, she, but she definitely got tested. So this is good for her early in her career. Get this shit out of the way. Get these tests out of the way. You don't need to be having these you know, later on down the road. You don't want it to be easy. You want it to be difficult. Well, fucking Cloudy made it difficult. Okay? Uh, in your co-main event. Now, I interviewed Justin Patterson, and he was cutting weight while we were talking. Okay, and I don't want to say, like, I just, I don't think I'm going to do that again. I, I, I don't think I'm going to do that again. Uh, it's just, I think, like, for me, it's like, what if I took his focus away? I don't want to fucking do that to anybody. So I don't think I'm going to do that shit again. Um, but uh, he took on undefeated Matt Dixon. Uh, and Matt Dixon got it done uh, 30-27s across the board. Bullshit, but, you know, the fight was way closer than a 30-27s across the board. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I thought Patterson uh, definitely had the first round, and the other two rounds were pretty close. Dixon was getting it done with takedowns, but he wasn't doing shit with them. Okay? He wasn't doing anything with the takedowns. So, I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. And, again... Uh, with the broadcast, this is actually Pat Militich. He thought Patterson was gonna, you know, walk away with the, the decision here. Um, now I don't know if that's, you know, uh, due to home cooking. Not like you know saying that they were in on it, but you know they're in Texas. Yeah. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is, I don't fucking agree with the decision. I'm not saying that the wrong or right guy won, but 30-27 is fucking stupid. How about that? How about that? Because it was a close fight. And I did feel at the end, like, eh, you know what, maybe Patterson didn't do enough. Okay? And whenever I feel that way, I'm not going to really uh, criticize, you know, who won uh, too bad. But 30-27s, get the fuck out of here. Okay? Get the fuck out of here. Well, your main event didn't need the fucking judges. Because Damon Jackson's only been in the fucking scorecards twice. Okay? He's got a knack of finishing fights. Uh, usually on the ground, which is where this fight ended. But not before he fucking knocked around Mauro Shaolet. Uh, in the first couple minutes, okay? He knocked the boy around and then got it to where he was comfortable, okay? But I'm telling you, if they said, nah, he's got to stand back up and you got to fucking, you know, kickbox with this bull, Damon was looking good, man. Damon was looking good. So hopefully we can get him back on, uh, you know, this time coming off of a, a, a win. But uh, look, this is good shit right here. Damon Jackson, I don't give a fuck. You know, he's been, he was bounced out of the USC, bounced out of PFL. Maybe he should go try his luck in Bellator, man. I'm telling you, dude is good, okay? Dude is good. Finishes fights, which is something we like, okay? Now, we've got about 15 minutes here to talk about the UFC. So I'm going to run through it as best as I can, but cover as much as I can. But I'm going to start from the top this time because I'm tired of not giving the main event enough time. Because I'm usually fucking trying to, you know, speed through it just to get through it. So we keep this show at a half hour. But look, your main event, they laid an egg, man. This fight was a snoozer. It was a bummer. I was watching it. I was excited. But the consensus is, is that Israel Adesanya defeating Yoel Romero via unanimous decision. A, I don't know about the decision. Okay? I'm telling you, I may have been saucy. But I thought Yoel was going to be named your new champ, okay? Now, this whole, you got to take it from the champ to be the champ, I don't know about that, okay? I don't know about that frame of thinking. And look, one of my fucking uh, favorite guys, Dominic Cruz, he says that. If you want to 
beat the champ, you've got to take it from the champ. Now look, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that way of thinking. I just don't think that way. And I thought, here, maybe Yoel had done enough. I'm not a fucking judge, okay, nor do I claim to be. I thought, hey, Yoel's probably going to walk away with this. And he didn't. And was I upset? No. I was upset at the fight. You know, because the only exciting uh, moments in the fights was when Yoel would explode. You know what I mean? That shit was exciting. Now, everybody criticizing just Yoel Romero and not Israel Adesanya. Now, look, Israel had a lot more to lose, okay? But you asked for this fight, and you said you were going to sleep the dude. Now, I know fighters are always like, I'm going to sleep this dude, and they don't always do. Okay, not everybody can fucking have that run that Conor McGregor did where he was claiming shit and then following through. Okay, I get it. But at the same time, you didn't even attempt to sleep the fool. Okay? And then let's not even get into the fucking uh, the post-fight press conference bullshit that Yoel was spitting. Jesus, man. The translator was even like, you want me to say what? <laughs> fucking crazy, Yoel. Don't give a fuck about nothing. I love you. I love you. <laughs> anyway, so... We're not going to give that fight any more shine. Because, you know, it is what it is. In the co-main event, Wei Li Zhang defeated uh, Joanna Janczajczyk via split decision. This decision, I do not agree with. I thought Joanna did enough. Now look, her head fucking blew up like a balloon. Okay? And I'm not saying that, you know, that had a lot to do with what I, what I feel the judges were judging on. Like, holy shit, her head is fucking swelling, you know, uh, an inch a second. So, I think it inf impacted the judging a little bit more than it should have. Now, it's striking and aggression. Or, no, sorry, striking and aggression, you fucking idiot. Striking and grappling, aggression and octagon control. Not anywhere in that is damage. Now, look, damage plays a part. It really does. Sometimes you'll look at a fight and be like, who won that fight? Well, obviously, if you look at these two, the same, okay? But I thought that fucking uh, Joanna had done enough. Do I agree with all the pre-fight build-up bullshit she did? Fuck no. Making fun of her because she's from China and you're talking about this coronavirus thing. Was it funny? Look, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't laugh at a couple of them. But look, that makes me an asshole. I've accepted the fact that I'm an asshole. But that shit's wrong, Okay. That shit's wrong. Coronavirus. That's why I'm not drinking any. <laughs> uh, the listeners, the, the audio side, they couldn't see that. It's probably a good thing. But look, they put on the best fight I've seen in a long time. Okay? It was technical from start to finish. These chicks put everything on the fucking line. Look at Yoana's head afterwards, okay? Look at Yoana's head afterwards. Like, that is just absolutely insane, okay? Absolutely insane. These girls deserve, uh... I don't think you can pay them for what they did in there, okay? I don't think you can pay... Like, there is not enough money in the world that... Well, I mean, there probably is. But, look, man, that shit was good. Now, a lot of people are fucking, you know... Like, oh, it wasn't just the best woman's fight ever, it was the best fight ever. Look, the fight was pretty fucking good. Okay? And if you want to break it down sex-wise, yes, that is the best women's fight I've ever seen. You want to break it down non-sex-wise, it's fucking up there. Okay? Because that fight was badass. Was it the greatest ever? I don't know. I can't give you that answer right now. I'd have to go back and watch all the fights that I think were the greatest ever. There's, like... You know, it's solid, like, two handfuls. That's probably the wrong gesture. But look, there's probably, like, ten, ten good fights that could contend for the greatest fight of all time. There's probably more than ten. If you want to go multi organizations, I mean, fuck. It's a lot. Anyway, fucking hands down, you know it. These chicks got fight of the night. Okay, you know they did. If they didn't, Dana White's fucking fired. I fired him. Oh, wait, they got fired of the night. Okay, you can have your job back, Dana. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm doing pretty good here, Ed. Thank you, God, you fucking liar. 
Anyway, uh, so yeah, dope ass fight. Uh, everybody was on their fucking feet, um, except for Cejudo. Oh, he might have been, but you know he was only as tall as the guys that were still sitting. Um, can't, that's that's so fucked up. That's so fucked up. I'm a short guy, so I can say it. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, it was a great fight. I, we were standing. Me and my buddy Nesto, he came over. It was good times, man. Good times. He fucking had a toothache. And he was still fucking jamming with me. It's good shit, Nesto. You're my boy. Anyway, the fight before that, you had Benil Dariush taking on Drakkar Close. Now, I watched a couple of interviews with Close. Okay? Not with clothes. I mean, I was wearing clothes, because that'd be weird if I was watching Drakkar Close videos without clothes. That'd be very fucking strange. Like, just Drakkar Close? Not all fighter interviews. Anyway, let's not get into a fucking weird, like, I'm, I'm always wearing clothes, okay? Even I sleep in my underwear, I don't even sleep naked. The only time I'm naked is in the shower. I bone with my socks on. Get over it. Anyways, uh, but Close was, like, you know, doing things differently. And he was seen a sports psychologist, and he was talking about, like, how he used to go in there, like, aggressive, and he had to hate his opponent, and yada, yada, yada. And I was just like, you know, this is a very responsible and mature approach to cage fighting. Now, Darius didn't give a fuck about that, did he? Because he fucking knocked out Drakkar Close in the first round, or sorry, second round, second round. The first round, he was a backpack. He said, backpack, backpack, you remember Dora? Anyway. Second round, a minute in, close rocks Darius. Darius comes right back and puts him on chicken legs. Okay, and then they're exchanging while close is walking backwards, and then boom, mouthpiece goes like it was trying to hook him. You know what I mean? And look, props to Darius for not following up. He could have followed up and he didn't. Fucking his spec, man. Fucking his spec. And you know that shit got a performance bonus. I think it did. We'll find out here in a minute. I think it was. I think it was uh, Zhang uh, Ioana for uh, the fight of the night. And the performance bonuses was Darius. And we'll get to the next one. Okay. But yeah. Darius says he wants a quick turnaround. But after he ties the knot with his significant other. So, excuse me. Uh, hopefully, the UFC can uh, grant those wishes. Darius, man, when this guy's on, this guy's fucking on. He's got to win over Dober. Okay, you know I'm a, I'm a Dober fan. I, don't, I was going to say like a Doberian or something like that. I don't fucking know. Anyway, um, so I'm pretty excited about Darius. Close is a tough son of a gun. Okay, he trains out of the lab over here in Arizona. And you know how us fucking homers are, okay? Okay? We fucking tend to be homies. Anyway, uh, Neil Magny coming off of a suspension, a, a long layoff, I think it was like a couple years, uh, don't quote me on the time, okay, I just haven't seen the guy in a while, he defeated Li Jingliang via unanimous decision, 30-27s across the board, uh, saying, hey ring rest, fuck you, hey USADA, fuck you, <laughs> he looked Badass. Dude's not getting enough credit uh, for the performance that he put through on this card. We might go a little bit over. So, just bear with me here. Uh, Alex Oliveira defeated Max Griffin via split decision. I didn't agree with it. Just going to put that out there. I thought Max Griffin did enough with uh, his takedowns. It was a bloody affair. But, uh, I don't know. I just, I thought Max had won the fight. In your main prelim, your prelim main event, sorry. Uh, Sean O'Malley defeated Jose Quinones via TKO in round one, two, oh, two. Another guy that trains out at the lab. Uh, he got your uh, third bonus, okay? He was the second uh, performance of the night, along with uh, your your girls, uh, saying, and uh, Yon Chechek taking fight of the night, and Dariush taking uh, performance bonus. So, again, Sean, just like Neil, long layoff. Fuck you, ring rest. Fuck you, USADA. Okay? Right after the fight, he's like... Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mark Madsen 
defeated Austin Hubbard via unanimous decision, 29-28 across the board. He got tested in that third round. Hubbard could have finished him. I believe that. But Madsen is a fucking gamer. Okay, that was cool to see. Mark is an Olympian, and he was dealing with some injuries. Look, no one comes in 100%. I tweeted that shit. You know what I mean? But, hey, props to him for fucking making the fight and getting it done. I might sneeze. I don't know. Rudolfo Vieira defeated Safarov via a triangle choke in the first round. He was not going to see the second round. No pun intended. His, his eye was swelled shut. Okay? They, they weren't going to let him into the fucking second round. He had to finish the fight. And he did what he had to do. So good for him. Uh, getting it done in round one. Gerald Mearshart. This was a good fight. Now, it was very slow paced. Uh, these guys were knocking each other around all over the goddamn cage. There was a little bit of bad blood coming in here. Uh, Darren went, made weight this time, and uh, was looking pretty good. Look, the guy is as short as I am, and he fights at middleweight. I don't even weigh 185 pounds anymore. I might. But that's besides the point. Like, dude is not built for middleweight, okay? He's not built for middleweight. Not even well. Look, let's put this, uh, to put it in perspective, Alex Volkanovsky is 5'6". I am 5'6", okay? I'm just a fucking dickhead that hosts a fucking podcast. Alex Volkanovsky is a featherweight champion. Darren Wynn is the same height as both of us. What the fuck, Darren? You crazy fighting all these big dudes. I think he's even fought as heavy as light heavyweight. Don't quote me, but maybe. What the fuck, dude? Get a nutritionist, you know, and get this shit, uh, fight some smaller guys, man, because Cheryl Mearshart's huge. Anyway, he got it done via rear naked choke in the third round. It was more of a neck crank is what it looked like, but uh, he got the, uh, the finish there. Uh, and then Gaiga Chikadezi defeated Jamal Emers via split decision. And I fucked up, and I missed these prelims, so I can't really say much about them. Uh, the Na Batgarel, if I'm saying that right, defeated Guido Cantanelli via knockout round one. Now look, my picks, I have no idea how they did, because I do not remember who I fucking picked. So I'm a space case like that, but I'm pretty sure I did very well on this card. I picked both champs to retain, they retain. I picked Magni to win, he won. Let's see, uh, I think I picked Griffin over Alex. I picked Sean, I think I picked Mark. I think I picked Rodolfo, I think I picked Gerald. I picked Jamal, and I think I, I picked Dana. Anyways, so you can follow my picks. Usually I do a better job, but this, this pay-per-view I kind of fucked the dog. I took a nap, um, an ill-advised nap at an ill-advised time, and it kind of screwed me over, so. Anyways, again, catch me and my boys. We'll be performing at The Edge, uh, March 14th, uh, with War of Ages, Convictions, and Dens. Uh, there's a Combate show the night before that. There's Fury FC the night before that. Um, uh, there's, there's some other cards going on uh, that weekend, so I will do my best. Look, I'm playing a show, so I might not get to most of them. Okay, but check out Yanez over at Fury FC. Check out Combate on Access TV. And then uh, I'll be, shit, I'll be fucking, you know, doing my show as per usual. But like I said, bear with me. It might be a day late. I'm trying to keep this shit on Mondays. But it might be Tuesday. Just saying. Anyways, until next time.